this is project one, video number one. In project one, we've got uh, an XY coordinate system. And we got a hundred charged particles spread out along the X axis from the origin to one meter. And we're asked to find uh, the electric field at Y is equal to one meter. So make that y is equal to one meter, so one meter would be about over here. There's the x axis, the y axis, there the uh, charged particles spread out along there. And we'll get a hundred of them. I'm not going to try to show all 100 of them. I'll call uh, this one the ith particle. Here's my plan. I'll find. Uh, the electric field due to the ith particle, and it's got charge Q, at point, I call it point P, and if uh, Q is a positively charged particle, uh, E will look like this. And uh, I'll break that up into its components. <coughs> so find, oh, that would be EI. So the electric field due to the ith particle, which got, has a charge Q. Find uh, EI using KQ over RI squared. All right, let's uh, talk about what RI squared is. Um, this position over here is going to be XI be zero for uh, the first one and uh, one meter for the last one and something in between for all the other ones. Um, and this position over here or this distance is just y which is one meter uh, given in the problem statement. So uh, I'll go where r sub i is the square root of xi squared plus y squared. No sub i on that because uh, that distance is the same for whichever particle you're working on. Then uh, I want to get the x component of uh, the electric field due to particle number i and get the y component due to the electric field uh, due to particle number i. I'm doing a vector addition problem, so uh, I, I uh, get those components for all uh, 101 particles, and then I add up all the x components to get the total, uh, to get the x component of the total electric field, and add up all the y components to get the y component of the total electric field. Uh, to get the, the uh, x component, um, I'm going to need to know the angle uh, of the uh, electric field, the direction of the electric field, which is going to be uh, this angle right here. And That angle right there is going to be uh, call this phi. It's going to be 180 degrees minus phi, where uh, phi I call it phi sub i since I'm dealing with the ith particle. Um, let's see the tangent of phi sub i is equal to y over x sub i. And I've, I've got an issue on there because if uh, for the very first particle where uh, x sub i is uh, 0, uh, this will be infinity. And uh, infinities aren't uh, nice to deal with. So uh, 
let's look at uh, let's see if we can uh, do that a different way so this angle theta um, I think I'll uh, avoid using that so I don't have to worry about that, that special case when uh, x of i is equal to zero. could treat, handle that separately, but uh, I'd uh, prefer not to. So first off, uh, let's see if this looks like it's going to work. The tangent of gamma sub i is equal to x sub i divided by y. And y is always one meter, so we're never going to get in any problems with that. So gamma sub i is equal to uh, the arctangent of x sub i over y. Then um, phi sub i plus gamma sub i is equal to 90 degrees so phi sub i plus gamma is equal to 90 degrees and phi sub i plus theta and it's really sub i up here as well. So let's look at the here's the theta sub i um, theta sub i plus phi sub i is equal to 180 by inspection there. This was a sub i as well. So it's for the ith particle is equal to 180 degrees. So uh, let's see phi sub i is 90 degrees minus gamma sub i from here and then if I plug that into here I get 90 degrees minus gamma sub i plus phi sub i is equal to 180 degrees so theta sub i is equal to gamma sub i plus um, I'll add uh, gamma sub i to both sides there and subtract 90 degrees from both sides so plus 90 degrees alright and that's the angle that uh, our electric field vector is going to make with the x-axis so I mean, I'm going to need that formula. Let's actually do calculations. Um, this one, and in order to calculate this one, I need to use this one. So I think those are the ones that we're going to be using in the in the code. Then. Uh, E sub x, the component of a vector. Now well, I guess I call it E i x component. So uh, the x component of uh, the i con contribution to the electric field, or uh, the x component of the uh, contribution to the electric field due to the i particle is just. E i times the cosine of theta i and E i y component is E i times the sine of theta i. So that's something I should prove to you separately. Uh, so far we've always been using uh, triangles and here we're using a, a an extended definition of the cosine and the sine which corresponds to the projection of a, a unit vector on the x-axis for the cosine and on the y-axis for the sine. So I'll talk about, uh, give more uh, background on that later but I'm going to go ahead and use that result in this uh, 
exercise this project and this solution to this part of the project. All right, then uh, E x is equal to uh, the sum of all the i's. I get 101 particles, so I'll say i runs from 1 to 101, where 1 is the first particle, 101 the last, of uh, eix, the x component of uh, e sub i, and e y component, the y component of the total vector is e y x uh, e i y component. All right, so uh, we'll need those. Once we got the uh, total x component of the electric field vector and the total y component of the electric field vector. We need to uh, construct the vector component diagram that puts those together. Uh, EX, EY, this is E. And uh, that's the theta for the entire vector, and that's what we want is uh, E and theta. So uh, the uh, E magnitude is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares and E uh, the theta uh, simple case um, the uh, tangent of theta is EY over EX. So theta is equal to the arctangent of EY over EX. Um, this, there's a, a function in uh, MATLAB that is something like, and I might have to look it up if I if I memorize this wrong, but uh, the uh, angle is equal to the arctan 2, I believe it's called, of EX comma EY. And it covers uh, this simple case where we can uh, see the derivation of it, but it also covers the more complicated cases. So for instance, if E is over here and your theta is over there, um, it'll give you uh, the, uh, the angle theta. Uh, and this is the angle we're looking for. Or, you know, for instance, if E is pointing down in this direction, so theta is actually this angle, uh, it gives it to you in any case. So, uh, I think it's actually going to be this one that I use. That given the the x and the y components, so it uh, tells you uh, how far over and how far up you got to go. Or in this case, it'll be a negative how far up. So uh, both of them are going to be negative. Uh, this one uh, negative in the x direction and the y direction. Uh, it gives you the angle, so it takes uh, into account and it. Uh, uh, the, the problem with just plain old uh, ordinary uh, uh, arctangent function is it depends on which uh, quadrant you are. The uh, uh, arctangent function is not a single valued function, so this takes into account what quadrant you are to actually get that angle. Now I think I got uh, just uh, one more issue here. Um, what I've got is good for uh, positively charged particles, and uh, certainly I can make it so that uh, what I'm looking at here is the magnitude of EI the whole time. Um, and then if this particle is negative, remember they all have the same sign, so I've more or less taken care of it if they're all positive. But if 
the charge of all the particles is negative, then the electric field is actually going to be in the exact opposite direction to the direction that I've indicated up there uh, with the positively charged particles. And in that case, um, the uh, electric field is, is not uh, this way, but it's in the exact opposite direction. So let's go down to where I had the angle and uh, say uh, if Q is less than zero, then uh, theta uh, I is equal to, um, I call it what I called it before, plus 90 degrees. So it's equal to what it was before, plus 180 degrees. Uh, uh, add or subtract 180 degrees, I choose to add it. So uh, that, that'll be uh, pretty important too. So to get the angle just right, um, what I did when I uh, went through it first was to assume that, that Q was greater than zero, in which case uh, E would be up and to the left, and uh, uh, made my calculations based on that. But if uh, Q is negative, it's actually going to be down and to the right, and the way I'll, uh, that's the exact opposite direction. So I add 180 degrees to whatever angle E I was making with the uh, uh, x-axis and uh, I get the uh, uh, actual angle of the electric field. Um, and by the way, I got a, we're always supposed to draw a vector component diagram uh, whenever we're uh, calculating the, the components of a vector from a vector. So let's draw that up here. So this was EI Here's EIX. Here's EIY. And uh, in this case, I said I was just in a different way rather than just analyzing a triangle. This is the theta sub i. So there's my vector component diagram. I really should have done that uh, before analyzing it. It corresponds to the analysis that was going on right here. So it refers to star. And we'll make star be this. Okay, so I think I'm ready um, to create an outline, and we've, we're familiar enough with uh, MATLAB, it might not be a bad idea to just try to use some of the commands uh, directly. So, um, code outline, I got one, I'm going to create a set of uh, x sub i's. So I call it uh, array x lin space um, from 0 to 1 and I want 101 values. I'll check and make sure that comes out right. I, I need 100 spaces, and I don't remember whether we put the number of uh, spaces or the number of values. Um, number of values. But uh, if we need the number of spaces, I'll reduce that by 1. Um, so it's a code outline I, I build before I actually get into MATLAB and start uh, playing around with it. Then uh, let's see what else I need. I get uh, yeah, I do need uh, this one. So 
So calc r sub i. Oh, uh, this is uh, more or less um, initializing variables. So I think I'll initialize some more. Y is equal to 1 meter. It's really just equal to 1. So that's my step 0 now. And then um, R is equal to uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that gives an array of R values. One for every element in here. And I'm, I might need, uh, I think this uh, in here is actually going to be x dot um, the to the two. Um, but uh, again, worry about some of the programming details when we get to it. We're uh, creating the algorithm here. And then I'm also going to need uh, gamma an array of uh, gamma values which uh, is um, the arctangent of x over y um, yep I'm pretty sure that's what we had up there for uh, gamma Okay, so that should give me a whole uh, set of those values. And then the theta values. Yeah, this was uh, just plain theta, and these were uh, theta i's. So, uh, go call this theta array. Maybe that's a good idea for all of these to make it clear that uh, these are arrays. So this will be uh, x array, r array. Now this is x array in here. And might need the x array is the point here. And this is x array. All right. Four to get my theta array because uh, when I didn't have the subscript, that was for the total electric field later on. So the theta array is the gamma array plus ninety degrees. So theta array equals, and this is gamma array, gamma, yeah, array plus 90. And I can't put the degrees in the code, but I can here in my uh, little outline. And then if Q is less than zero, then uh, I'll go uh, negate. If Q less than zero, negate uh, the theta array. Um, I, don't, I don't think I want to negate it so much as uh, add uh, 180 degrees to each element of the theta array. 
Okay, then um, E ray is K, and yeah, I'm going to have to initialize that. So K equals uh, 8.99 is 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And what else do we have? We get the the Q is our argument, so uh, we can just use that K Q over R array. Now that's kind of cool. So I got 101 values of uh, the electric field, and I'll go E X. X-ray is equal to E-ray times uh, the sine, uh, cosine of theta-ray. So that'll give me all the components of the electric field at that location. 8 E Y array is equal to E array times the sine of theta array. And then uh, some I'll go just EX equals the sum of all the elements in EX array. And EY is equal to the sum of all the elements in the EY array. And then E magnitude is the x squared plus the y squared square root and angle, uh, just call it theta, let's see if I, uh, yeah, I did call it theta right there. And that's going to be that arctangent 2 of uh, EX comma EY. And uh, those are the return variables. So that's what gets returned. Now, um, it said in the pencil and paper part, if you go through the checklist, they want us to uh, get a diagram, calculate the values of the X and Y components of the contribution to the electric field at 0, 0,1 meter due to the charged particle at, due to that last one. So uh, due to the one that's all the way over here at one meter when the charge is a particular value. So normally uh, the value is what the, the user chooses as uh, the value for the argument to the function, but uh, they want us to calculate it for uh, one value 
uh, just to make uh, sure that we got it. So, so that actually took care of program outline uh, sample case uh, find e i x e i y when um, x i is one meter and q is two times ten to the minus fifth coulombs so uh, we can refer to the the same picture but I think I'll draw it again so we're all the way out here this is xi equals one meter um, Y was always equal to one meter. This is the X direction. This is the Y direction. This charge particle Q, uh, which by the way is equal to two times ten to the minus fifth coulombs, creates an electric field right here. Um, it's the ith one uh, for that. Uh, and it, it's actually the 101st one, so maybe I should call it 101. Is I is equal to 101. So uh, E101 for this particular case is K Q over uh, R101 squared. Uh, R101 squared is equal to x101 squared plus y squared which is equal to 1 meters 1 meter squared plus 1 meter squared and I didn't want the square of the value just the value itself so our 101 is equal to the square root of uh, one meter squared plus one meter squared, which is 1.4142 meters. All right, so that's uh, an intermediate result. Then uh, to get E101, E101 is an 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times the charge that they said which was 2 times 10 to the minus fifth coulombs and then that's all divided by 1.4142 meters squared so E101 itself would be 89,902 um, newtons per coulomb. And uh, just checking to make sure the units actually work out to that. So uh, that's important. Um, when we got uh, that circumstance, uh, this angle is equal to 45 degrees by inspection. Um, it's a uh, 112. Uh, it's it's a right angle with these two sides being equal. All right. So uh, our vector component diagram. Now we should do it. Uh, call it with the, the triangle method. So uh, E101 draw a vector component diagram here's uh, E101 
uh, X component magnitude E101 Y component this is the theta uh, which is 45 degrees so E101 X component magnitude is equal to E101 cosine of theta uh, which is Eight nine nine zero oh two newtons per coulomb times the cosine of forty five degrees, which is uh, sixty three five seventy. E101 X magnitude E101 X is the negative of that because uh, the vector component itself or the component vector itself is pointing leftward so the scalar component is that that's one of the things uh, they wanted us to uh, solve for and Zero one, and then e one o one y. It's the same magnitude by inspection. E one o one y is sixty three five seventy newtons per coulomb by inspection at this point. We know it's the same magnitude because we're dealing with a 45 degree angle there and uh, it is upward so vector in the upward direction having the same magnitude uh, would be this times j so this is the, uh, the y component of it. So uh, that you know you're going to solve for based on uh, the checklist and that uh, should come in handy if especially the code's not working but uh, we can check to make sure that uh, we get those values for uh, E101 X and Y for the uh, the last charged particle the, the components of the total of the uh, contribution to the uh, electric field due to that rightmost charged particle the one that's right at X is equal to 1 meter alright so uh, that wraps it up. Hopefully uh, your outline of the code is going to come out a little bit neater. I was adding these uh, arrays in there after the fact. And uh, we'll see what we run into when we got to program it up. And be careful. Please know I might have to come back and uh, make some adjustments to uh, this part of the project while I'm doing the coding. It's always a good idea to uh, code up the project in time to uh, make sure that the, the paper part of the solution is correct. Alright, that's a wrap for Project 1, Video 1.